to you about license law rules. And this section one is going to be one that we do um, in quite a few separate little units. I mean, there, it's broken out into units for you already, but we're not going to, most of the other chapters, we're going to go through straight through unit by unit, you know, unit 2.1, unit 2.2, unit 2.3, until we finish all of that chapter. Um, but in unit one, which is license law, we're going to do that in separate pieces because the license law rules are super complex. Um, and I find that really we have to do them in small batches because they are complex and it takes a lot of application. Remember that you are taking a two-part exam and one of those parts is a North Carolina specific section. Um, and so this is the North Carolina specific section. It's unit one. It used to be called Appendix A uh, in the Dearborn textbook, which is no more um, for those of you that have seen it in the, in the past, but it is unit one in your new textbook. There are no appendix, uh, no appendices in this textbook. Um, uh, but the license law comments can be found at this link that I've given you on this slide right here. And if you notice that comes directly from the Real Estate Commission. And look, what do you notice is the actual name of the link? What do they call these license law and rule comments on their website? What do they call it? Study guide. They call it the study guide. You know, I don't know, but maybe that might sort of signify something kind of important that you might want to take a look at if the people at the Real Estate Commission put this thing on their website and they literally call it the study guide. So it's literally everything you're going to need to know on page. I think it's 18. It tells you how many questions are going to come from each section. Yeah. So I think it's really important to take a look at the license law and rule comments several times throughout the class. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to talk about them. I'm not giving you an assignment to go do this on your it's own. Not that one. But you need it's, it's, it's not that one. I'm so sorry. It's you're on thinking, another one. You're thinking about real estate licensing in North Carolina, which will. Yes. As well. But the license law and rule comments are basically what the Real Estate Commission says you need to know about their rules. And so we're going to do that in units, but always make sure you're going back to the real resource. The first section here that we want to deal with of license law, um, and remember, this is all North Carolina specific, anything in unit, so if we're in unit one, are we talking about national stuff or are we talking about North Carolina stuff if we're in unit one? North Carolina. Always North Carolina. These are North Carolina Real Estate Commission rules for people who have a North Carolina real estate license. You guys can unmute as well and speak if you'd like. For sure. For sure. The, the first section that we want to talk about is who needs a license? What, what would I do that would require me to need a license? And I can tell you, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction here. You would be wrong if you tried to answer this question right now. Almost all of you would answer questions in an entirely incorrect way if I was to ask you, does it require a license? Like, I'm going to, just throw, I'm going to throw a question out there for you all right now. Answer from your first instinct. Don't try to get it right. From your first instinct. Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on somebody here. I'm gonna pick on Hilda. Um, let's say Hilda, you don't have a real estate license, correct? No, you don't. Okay, all right. She shook her head. She said no. You can unmute too if you want to, but I saw you say no. Hilda does not have a real estate license. Hilda, do you own your own house? If you do, um, did you when you bought it? Did you use a real estate agent? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did you did you get any of the commission on that deal or did the real estate agent get all the commission? No, the real estate did everything. The real estate agent got all the commission. Why didn't you get some, Hilda? What? Why didn't why didn't you get some of the commission? Because I don't know, I don't have idea. I contact the agent and she did everything for me. And when I pay, she received her commission. I don't go. pay directly, you know, like fair enough. Fair enough. So here's my question for all of you. Could Hilda have been paid 
some or all of that real estate commission when she bought her house, even though she does not have a real estate license in North Carolina? That's my question. Could no. Hilda have no. been paid some or all of no. that real estate commission no. without a real estate no. license? No. No. Yes. No. Let me be the first to point out why you need me, people. <laughs> because every one of you who just said no just failed the North Carolina license exam because you do not need a real estate license to be paid a commission on any real estate transaction. You need a real estate license to be paid on some real estate transaction. And that particular one is not one of them. Hilda could have been paid that commission. She was entirely legally entitled to that commission if she wanted to be. How many of you now understand why we got to go through these rules in detail? Because what you thought you knew is what? Wrong. Oh. It's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> and it's going to be tested. It's going to be yeah. tested extensively. So now here's the here's what here's the rule. And then we're going to we can go over the rule in like a minute, but then we're going to talk about the rule for probably an hour or more. It says that persons or businesses who for consideration, consideration is a fancy word for money, folks, something of value. It says if you're a person or a business and for money or something of value or the promise of money or something of value, you perform a real estate activity for who? Others. For others then you must have a real estate license. So why does he, if we just look at that rule, why did Hilda not need a real estate license in order to be paid that commission in that transaction? It says here, it because says it here, if you're performing a real estate activity and you're getting paid for it, you need a real estate license if you're doing the work for who? Somebody for else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Was she doing the work for somebody else? So if she had been paid, who would she have no, been working no. for? For herself. for herself. For herself, because she was the buyer. And would she have needed a license? The answer is what? No. 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 She would not have needed a license. That's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to tear this rule apart over the mm -hmm. next hour. And we're going to talk about how this simple little rule gets applied in all these different real world scenarios. Does that make sense? Great, yeah. great way to say that, because I think still you still got to break through that mental barrier that this is not going to be something you can memorize. They're going to take that scenario and twist it up every single damn which way you can think of. You got to be able to apply this rule to any scenario you're given. That's exactly right. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit here and tear this thing apart. So let's first talk about what a real estate license is. And then we'll talk about when someone or something might need a real estate license. A real estate license is licensure basically to get paid for helping other people, not yourself, with something relating to a real estate transaction. Now, something relating to a real estate transaction, that could be almost it. Would leasing be something related to a real estate transaction? If you help somebody rent out their house, would that be something related to a real estate transaction? Yeah. Yes. 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 So buying a house, that's something related to a real estate transaction. Auctioning a piece of farmland, that's something related to a real estate transaction. I only need this license if I want to be paid for that service. And I am performing the service for somebody other than who? Mm, themselves, myself. Other than oh. myself. And that's why I chose to have a real estate license. I chose to have a real estate license because I don't want to just get paid when I'm helping myself. I want to get paid when I'm helping people other than myself. I just listed a house for sale on Lake Gaston that we talked about earlier and put it under contract. Am I the owner of that house? No. 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 So I'm helping somebody other than myself sell a house, which is certainly real estate related. And I probably expect to be what? Paid for it. Paid for that service. And when you combine 
all of those things together. That is the requirement for a real estate license. That's what actually creates the requirement for a real estate license. Now, one of the first things that we need to differentiate is there are two types of real estate license ease in North Carolina, two groups that might need a real estate license. People, I'm a person, Seth is a person, or companies. Trav talks real estate. Does that sound like a person to you or does that sound like a company to you? Sounded like a company. company. That sounds like a company to me. Here's the thing. The same rule applies to companies that applies to people. If a company is helping someone other than that same company with a real estate transaction and the company expects to be paid, do you think the company needs a real estate license? Yes. 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 Same rule applies. Same rule if it allows a person or a company. Yeah, same rule. So let me let me point out something to you. That listing that I put on the market this past weekend, what do you think was on the sign? What logo, what name do you think was on the sign that said for sale? What do you think? Uh, Rap Talks Real Estate. Rap Talks, Talks Real Estate. And when the commission check comes in, how do you think the commission check's going to be payable from the seller to... Travis talks real estate or directly to Travis? Seth Thomas. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, The real estate company. Trav talks real estate. So Trav talks real estate has helped somebody else with a real estate transaction and Trav talks real estate is going to be paid for it. Does Trav talks real estate, the company, need a real estate license in North Carolina? Yes. 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 They do. It does. And by the way, Travis Everett, is going to eventually get paid some money by the company. So now Travis Mm -hmm. Everett has helped somebody in a real estate transaction and Travis Everett has been compensated for helping them in a real estate transaction. Does Travis Everett, the person, need a North Carolina real estate license? Yep. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So here's what I want to point out to you all. How many real estate licenses are actually involved in that listing right there? Is it just one for me, the person, or are there two real estate licenses? Two. Two. There are two. The person needs a broker's license. People get broker's licenses in North Carolina. Companies get firm licenses. How many of you have ever heard that word before, a real estate firm? Anybody ever heard that before? Yes. So in the state of North Carolina, a real estate firm, and by the way, I don't want you to associate the word firm with a bunch of people. Could a firm only have one agent working in the firm? Yes. Yes, Yes, because the Mm -hmm. definition of a firm is just a company. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Yes. So if Trav Talks Real Estate only had one agent working for it, Trav Talks Real Estate would be the firm, would need a firm license, and that one agent, in this case, Travis, would need a broker's license. How many of y'all are are, are okay with that statement now? Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the key here is it's separate licensure for the company and separate licensure for the person, okay? So what what are the requirements to get a real estate license in North Carolina for brokers, for people? Because that's, are you all here to receive a broker license or are you all here to receive a firm license? Which one are you all trying to obtain? Broker. Broker. Broker license. You all are here to try to obtain a broker license. At some point down the road, might you want to open a real estate company? Yes. And if you did want to open a real estate company, would you need additional licensure at that point in time for the company? Yes. 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 We need a what kind of license? Firm Firm license. Firm license. Firm license. That's exactly right. But right now you got to start at ground zero and ground zero is a broker license. So here are the basic requirements. Taj, did you have a question about that? I do. Say for instance, um, you're working under say Keller Williams. Um, and you decide to get your own LLC under Keller Williams. 
does your business still need a firm license, although you're still operating under Keller Williams or someone like that? So let me, let's answer your question, Taj, and I can answer your question real fast, but the better is to apply the rule. Yeah. So Taj wants to create an LLC. Now, Taj, I'm assuming if you're going to create an LLC, that means you want your commissions paid to the LLC rather than to you personally. Is that what you want? Correct. Okay. So you want commissions in a real estate transaction paid to an LLC. Does that sound like it's a company that's being compensated for providing real estate services for others to you, Taj? Yes. So what's the answer to your question? Does that company need a firm license? Yes. What do y'all think? Help her out. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so what that is, is one firm works for another firm. The LLC you just created now works for Keller Williams. Right. Keller Williams is a firm. The LLC you created now works underneath Keller Williams and then you work underneath the LLC that you created. You just lay in a man. But all it's a great question. It's a fantastic question. And we always go back and apply the rule, apply yep. the rule, apply the rule, apply the rule. You're going to hear that many times. Right. That's what we do. That's what apply we do. the rule. And if you still don't know, then ask. them. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So um, basic requirements for real estate brokers license. You got to be 18 years old at the time you're licensed. Believe it or not, you can actually take the class when you're under the age of 18. There's no requirement to be 18 when you're enrolled in the class, but there's a requirement to be 18 when you take the license exam. Um, uh, they, they sometimes sneakily ask things like that on tests. Yeah. You have to have legal status in the United States. Now you can have legal status in a number of ways. Of course, you can be a United States citizen or you can be a permanent resident, AKA a green card holder um, or anyone with a valid work visa or any other um, uh, current valid legal residency um, or um, uh, status in the country allows you to obtain a North Carolina real estate license. So it's not just for citizens, it's for anybody who has legal status um, in the United States that is of the age of 18. Um, um, there is no requirement for education prerequisites. You don't have to be a high school graduate. You don't have to be a college graduate. None of those things um, apply. But real estate services, this is one of the ways when we try to give you little tricks when we can help. Real estate services or real estate activities can be remembered with the little sort of mental trick of LL beans. Um, and some of you know this brand, some of you don't, some of you may have not ever bought an L.L. Bean product before, but some of you will recognize them. Um, and this is just a way to help you sort of memorize all of the things that are considered real estate services in the state of North Carolina. Now, keep in mind, you don't automatically need a real estate license if you're doing these things. Could you be doing these things and still avoid having to have a real estate broker's license in North Carolina? Yes. 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 If you were doing them for who? For yourself. For yourself. For yourself. So if you're listing your own house for sale, do you need a real estate license? No. 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 If you are um, helping someone else negotiate the sales price of their house, but you're not being compensated. Do you need a real estate license? No, no, yeah. no. So you only need a real estate license if you're doing one of these things and for somebody else and being paid for your work. Does that make sense for everybody? Whether yes. you're a person or a company. That's right. Keep whether, that in mind. Whether you're a person or a company. So if somebody came to me, uh, I'll give you an example. This is how real world questions come up and they could come up on an exam, right? Someone came to me last week and they said, I don't want to be a real estate agent. I'm just a really good negotiator. I feel like a lot of these sellers are leaving money on the table. I just want to give them advice about helping them negotiate the deals that they accept. Because I feel like sometimes they're accepting offers too fast. I said, what was the first thing out of your mouth? You said, you don't need to be a real estate agent. You don't want to be a real estate agent. You just want to help people negotiate. So y'all walk me through this. 
They want to help people negotiate the sales price of their property and they want to be paid for it. Is that a real estate broker in North Carolina? Yes. 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 It doesn't By definition. matter. It doesn't matter if they're going to be the one listing that property. It doesn't matter if they're going to be a buyer's agent or a listing agent or no agent at all. Mm. Negotiating is one of those activities that if you do it for somebody else in a real estate transaction and you get paid for it, you need a license. Everybody following? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm. And so that's why this list of things is so important. And I've just kind of given you a little bit of a follow-up there of examples of real estate. But look at this one. I dropped my pencil here, my pen. Look at this one on the bottom. This is one I think we should pay special attention to. Even referring someone else to someone who's going to help them in a real estate transaction could be considered a real estate activity. So let me throw yep. this question out there for you. Let's say you don't want anything to do with the real estate business, but you know people who would be buying and selling. And so all you want to do is be able to give their name over to Seth so Seth can help them. And you want Seth to slide you a little bit of money. A on Chick-fil-A the gift card. Right? You want Seth to slide <laughs> you a little something, something because you helped him out. You gave him a client. Do you need a real estate broker's license to refer those people to another real estate broker and have the other real estate broker do all the work if you're being paid just for the referral? Do you need a license? Yes. 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 yes because referring is considered a real estate activity. And if you're being compensated, compensated. For and you're referring somebody other than yourself, you need a license just the same as the person. Absolutely. Actually doing the transaction. Folks, I will tell you, this one down here is actually, in my opinion, one of the greatest things about having a real estate license. This is literally a license to print money the rest of your life. How many of you would like the idea of doing absolutely nothing except making a phone call and waiting a couple months for a check to show up for several thousand dollars? Sounds good. Hey, I only got $1,000 on my first one, but that was from literally sending a name. Right. Listen, we just sent one out for 20, what, $2,700, $2,800 you and I just paid out in a referral fee to a former student who was in this class. Oh, she yeah. Got, she just got her license. She has not done a single transaction. She's in Charlotte. Her best friend is in Rougemont, North Carolina, wanted to sell her house calls up her friend and says, hey, didn't you just get your real estate license? Yeah, I did. Oh, well, do you want to sell our house for us? And she's like, I can't sell your house for you. You're in Rougemont. That's in near Durham. I don't know. I don't know that area. I'm not a member of the MLS up there. I don't even have my, I don't even have my stuff figured out yet. I don't know where I'm going to work or what I'm going to do or anything like that. But I know somebody who could help you. Who do you think she called, folks? No. Yo, Travis. Call me. She called me <laughs> and she said, listen, will you list this house up in Rougemont? And I said, sure. She said, will you give me 25% of the commission you charge them? I said, sure. Can I legally, now that she's licensed, can I legally send her 25% of the commission for doing absolutely nothing other than giving me her friend's name? Sure. No. Yes. Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. Go for Is it. there a standard in North Carolina for a referral fee? There is, there is not, and it, as a matter of fact, it's a good question because it would be illegal for there to be such a standard. Yeah, that would be price fixing, huh? It, it would be considered price fixing. But is 25% the usual thing people do? Well, it's negotiable in every situation. Uh -huh. She asked me if I was willing to do that, and that was a uh -huh. number I was comfortable with as well. It's just a negotiation between the two parties. Gotcha. You know, I could have said, no, I'd be more comfortable with 15%, but I was fine with the 25. And so that's what we agreed on. And I literally just sent out a, uh, a check to her office for 20, I think it was 27, $2,800. And she didn't do anything other than tell her friend, Hey, Travis will take care of you and give me her friend's email address and phone number. And we took it from there. We took it from there. Just a sec, back up. You said you sent it to a real estate office. So does her does her office share in referral fee? 
Um, well, that's that's between her and her office. I don't know what okay. her I don't know what her arrangement is with her office. I can only pay the office that she's affiliated with legally. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. As a real, as a real estate broker in this state, if you are affiliated with an office, all your compensation goes to your office, and then whatever deal you have with them is whatever deal you have with them. Okay. How do we all feel so far? Feeling a little bit more comfortable about this rule? Yeah, starting to. <laughs> starting to get there. So again, just a reminder, if I'm working for myself, no matter what I'm doing, I don't need a what? A license. A license. No matter what I'm doing, no matter how involved it is, I don't, I don't need a license if I'm working for myself. Okay. If I'm working for somebody else and not being paid, I still don't need a license. But when I put it all together, and I'm doing a real estate related service, and I'm doing it for somebody other than myself, and I am being compensated, that's when a license is gonna be required. Now, Crystal asked a question. She said, well, what if you don't work in an office? Well, Crystal, we're gonna talk about that later as we start to work our way through. That's later in license statuses. Some, depending on your license status, some agents have to work in an office. They don't have a choice, and some can work without supervision. There's different, li once, once you get a broker's license, we're going to break that broker's license down into different categories. And there are different categories of licensees um, based on the experience uh, uh, and education that they've attained. Some of them cannot work without supervision. Some of them have to have supervision. Just to sort of a sneak preview, see where your brain is at. When you first get your license, which category do you think you're going to fall into? The ones who have to have supervision in order to use their license or the ones that can work without supervision? With supervision. Have to have to work with supervision. That's exactly right. So we'll talk about that later and what the rules are. Now, if somebody doesn't work for an office, if they're unsupervised, I would send that referral fee directly to them. But if they're supervised, I have to send it to their supervisor, their office, and than whatever deal they have with their office. As an example, Seth is supervised. Now he doesn't have to be, he's one of those people who doesn't have to be, but he's chosen to be. And he's chosen to be affiliated with my office. But he makes a trade off there. By choosing to be affiliated with my office, nobody can legally pay him directly for real estate services except my office. Right. So if, so if Seth got a, was being paid a referral fee, would it go directly to Seth or would it come to Trav Talks Real Estate and then Trav Talks Real Estate would have to compensate him? Trav Talks Real Estate. It would go to Trav okay. Talks Real Estate. Very good. And I remember when I got a commission check one time just to kind of like help, you know, nail that in your brain. Um, it was in Durham, like maybe five miles from my house. And um, I had left. And on the way home, I was just kind of looking at it. I was like, yeah, I got paid. And then I saw in there, it said Seth Thomas. And I was like, and you would think that I could deposit that. I can't. I, well, I have to get it paid to the firm. To be clear, you, you could have, but you'd have been committing It'd a felony. It'd be very illegal. It, or you'd mm -hmm. be going to jail, right? Because. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, what do I do? They made the check out to me. I said, take it back. Take it back and get it made out to the office. Because here's what's crazy, folks. I can't even have a check made to me, even though I own the company, even though I'm the broker in charge of the company, because the minute I hung my license with that firm, mm -hmm. I agreed that all my compensation would always flow where? Through that firm. And I was just about to ask you, let's talk about why, because the firm is the one who represented the client. So right. the firm's the one who has to get paid and then we get paid through the firm. Exactly. So. Um, so that's a, it's a great question, Crystal, but that's, I don't know. So, at, you know, to follow that out to its logical conclusion, I don't know how much of that $2,700 Francesca is going to eventually get. That's none of my business. What I know is the $2,700 went to her office in Charlotte, and then she has whatever deal she's negotiated with that office. I don't know if she'll get all of it, half of half it. Of it you know, whatever that number is, that's, that's, that's her deal to negotiate with her office. We are independent contractors. 
Mm -hmm. And also just really quick, um, just so everybody knows like what happened. So if I hear any background noise or anything, I will always mute. Sometimes I'll put in the chat routine mute, but if I'm feeling lazy, I won't. If I mute you, just know you can absolutely unmute yourself at any time. I'm just trying to keep the audio clear. Right. And it's not because he wants to be rude or anything like that. Yes, it is. It's just, it, well, that might be true. <laughs> I'm giving. Um, But no, these these microphones are so oversensitive. They pick up so much stuff. And Very much. Rather than trying to find the one person where the noise is coming from, it's just easier to hit the mute all button. So. Um, here's one thing they like to snag people up on with the test. Well, what about if it's just, oh, I mean, they just, they didn't pay me. They just gave me a gift card from Starbucks. Folks, I cannot stress enough. There's no exception to the rule. When it says compensation, it means any compensation. So yeah. let me just throw this out there as a hypothetical. Let's say, and so I'll go back to Hilda. Hilda did not get paid when she bought her house, but let's say she loved her real estate agent. Thought your real estate agent did a fantastic job. And now Hilda's friend also wants to buy a house. Everybody following me so far? Yes. And Hilda recommends the real estate agent to her friend. Everybody with me? Okay. Now the real estate agent is happy to have that recommendation, but they can't pay Hilda a commission because Hilda does not have a what? A license. A license. So they close the transaction. And just as a little thank you, they send Hilda a thank you card with a $10 Starbucks gift card. And it says, thank you so much for thinking of me. I just really appreciate that. Have we violated the license law in North Carolina by giving Hilda a $10 gift card for that referral? Yes. yes. You yes, will see that. And you will see that on a test because it's so easy in your brain to think, <laughs> What you do? Dollars. Who who cares? And you know what, folks? That might be true in the real world, but that's not how it's going to be tested. That's not what the rule says. And listen, I get it. Does this sort of thing happen literally all the time? Yes. Even if somebody sends you a nice knife or something, a cutting board, any kind of gift, object, gift, any kind of gift. Now. It's perfectly fine for and legal for a real estate agent to give somebody a closing gift on their own closing because that's their transaction. They're not, you're not compensating them or giving them that cutting board for somebody else's transaction. You're giving it to them for their own transaction. But if you're the real estate agent and you send Hilda a nice cutting board, hey, Hilda, thanks so much for sending us your friend, Betty. That's a violation. Is everybody with me on that? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, does the firm get the gift card? So does the firm get the gift card? The answer is yes. <laughs> Believe it or not. If, so if, if, that, if Hilda was licensed and you wanted to send her that gift card, you should not send it directly to Hilda. You should send it to her firm. Everybody gets one chicken mini. That's it. Just one. That's it. That's it. You got to <laughs> split them up. You got to split them up. Sounds really good right now. So there's, the there's no exception at all for, you know, just kind of a small transaction or a small amount of money. I've given you this little visual of a three-legged stool because it helps me with these license questions of, you know, is a license required? I always find that to be a little bit helpful for me because it reminds me I am going to have to check if three things are going on. I only should say this person needs a license if all three of these things are happening at the same time. So, you know, because the reason I think of a three-legged stool is if I take one leg away from this stool, what happens to the stool? Falls over. Um, it falls over. It falls over, right? If, if, if you lose one of the three legs, then the stool falls over and we and we don't need a license. But if all three legs of the stool are there, that person that we're asking about needs a real estate broker's license in North Carolina. Remember, this is all North Carolina specific. I'm, don't, don't try to apply this to Georgia or Colorado or Connecticut. This is North Carolina license law. So question number one, you always have to ask yourself when you get these on the test and when you get these in the real world, the person listen the, listen sorry right, the person who we're talking about number one are they being compensated are they being paid because if they're not being paid can we just ignore the whole discussion about licensure anyway yes right 
you, you get a license to get paid. Right. Okay? So if they're, if they're not being compensated, then you can forget the whole thing. You don't need a license. But so question number one, are they being paid? And that could be a commission. I don't care what you call it. You can call it anything you want. Is a bonus. Appreciation fee. Is yes. A bonus being paid. Yes. Yes. Right. Or, or is a commission being paid a fee? Yes. 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 Is a gift card being paid a fee? Yes. yes. Is buying them a washer and dryer being paid a fee? Yes. I mean, yes. yes. <laughs> is, is giving somebody a free month of rent if you're a landlord paying yes. them? Yes. Right. yes. Something of value. Things are examples of compensation that they might ask you about on a test. So assuming that's a yes, then you go to question number two. If that's a no, you can stop and say they don't need a license. Okay. Assuming question number one is a yes, then you go to question number two. Mm -hmm. Is the person that we're asking about doing this work for someone other than themselves? Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. And are they doing this work for someone else? Okay. And then the third one, which is very similar to the first one, but we're going to revisit it. Am I being paid directly for the real estate service? Is that why I'm being compensated? Because I did a real estate service. If all of these are yeses, then we need a license. So let me just throw a hypothetical situation out there for you. Let's say that I am a property manager. And I run an apartment complex. All right. So y'all know, right, like right now, I'll use like a real world example right now, then I'll bring it back to real estate. I don't know how many of y'all notice, like they pay you to get the vaccine right now, right? They're paying you a hundred dollars to get vaccinated to go get the vaccine. Right? Yeah, I know. I missed my hundred dollars. I know me too. I'm going to go get vaccinated again. You go get another shot. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I, want to, I, I want the booster. Um, <laughs> they'll pay you to get vaccinated. But here's the even better one. They'll pay you if you take somebody to get vaccinated. Or they, they will pay you right now to haul people to get vaccinated. I think it's $25. Y'all get in my car. Right. And so you can take people to get vaccinated. Well, imagine a property manager who did that. Imagine if there was a property manager who said, if you bring somebody to our apartment complex and they rent one of our units, we'll give you a $50 gift card. Well, let me ask you a question. Are we compensating these people that are bringing people to our apartment complex? Yes. 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 Are they bringing themselves to our apartment complex or are they bringing somebody other than themselves to our apartment complex? Someone else. Somebody else. Somebody else. And are we paying them out of the kindness of our heart or are we paying them specifically because they did something that helped us with real estate? Helped with real estate. So are all three legs of the stool in place? In other words, yes. would we need that person who we're paying $50 to bring a tenant to us? Would, would they need to have a real estate license? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes, they would. Yes, they would. That's how you apply. Is that helping everybody how you apply the, the three-legged stool rule? Mm -hmm. That's yes. your base yes. foundation. You've got to know it. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So look at, look at this scenario right here. We're going to go through several of these. Okay. It says, Juliana finds out that her best friend is interested in purchasing a new home and puts her friend into contact with an active real estate broker named Jane, who's in Greensboro, who will represent the friend in the purchase. Upon closing, Greensboro broker Jane sends Juliana a $200 Amazon gift card. Does this require licensure for Juliana? So I want you to think about that for just a second. And I want you to go through in your mind whether or not you think that requires licensure for Juliana. And, uh, and I'm going I'm to flip over to this slide so we can think about it. First of all, is Juliana being paid a fee in this, in this scenario? Yes. 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 Right? Okay. Is Juliana working for herself or for someone else? For someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Because someone else, she's referring a friend, right? And right. is Juliana being paid a fee for real estate in this thing? Yes. 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 All three legs. Does Juliana need a real estate license? Yes, yes. she yes. does. Yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely. That's a great example of a test question. That's why we go through these scenarios here. So it's yes, because she is doing real estate for others for compensation. That's it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. Look at number two. It says Betsy Byers in the market to purchase a new house in Durham for herself and her family. Okay. She has decided she will not be represented by a licensed buyer's agent, but wishes instead to be paid the buyer agent commission on the house she is buying from Sam Seller. Does this require Betsy to be licensed? So let's, let's recap it again. Betsy is in the market to purchase a new house for herself and her family. She's decided she will not be represented by a buyer's agent, but wishes instead to be paid the buyer agent commission on the house she is buying from Sam the seller. Does this require Betsy to be licensed? What do y'all think? No. 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 This is a big fat no. And that is because Betsy's She's being paid and she's being paid for a real estate thing, but she is not working for someone else. Who's she working for? For herself. Herself. She herself. Is working for herself. By the way, that's kind of the same question I started out with that everybody missed earlier. So hopefully we fix that one. All right. She's doing <laughs> real estate for herself. She's working for herself. She does not need licensure. Is there anybody yeah. that doesn't understand that? Because I don't want to go. I don't want to go further until you. That's starting to click into place. We feeling pretty good with that. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Because now, unfortunately, we got to make it more complex. That's always the problem with license law. Yeah. Every rule that we will cover in this class always has exceptions to the rule exemptions so let's talk about what we before we talk about these ex exceptions let's talk about what an exception is let's talk about what it means when we say there's an exception to the rule break it down to me like i'm a third grader i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i mean you're so intelligent it's hard to talk down to you on that level but i'm gonna try okay uh -huh. an exception means the rule doesn't apply an exception means even though the rule says this person should have a license, we're going to let them get by by the skin of their teeth without having a license because they are the exception. Does that make sense for everybody? They are the exception to the rule. Okay. And so let me just kind of reiterate, when we get to this point, this person has met all three legs of the stool. That's They've right, done right. all three activities. So backing up and looking at the stool, this is a person who has met all three of the qualifications. In other words, we're about to say this person needs to have what? A license. A license, a license. right? We, we have checked and they're being paid. We have checked and they're working for somebody other than themselves. And we have checked and they're doing a real estate related service that they're being paid for. And so we're about to say, brother, you need a license. But yep. we've got one more thing to check. Are you that rare exemption to the rule? Is everybody with me on this? Do you all think this is the kind of thing they might test you on? Yes. You better Absolutely. Yes. You better believe it, right? So let's talk about, and there's actually three of them. There's number one, there's number two, and there's number Three. Personally, I think one, number one and two are the ones that they're going to try to test you on. I don't think. Number Agreed. Three, I don't think they're going to come after you very much on number three, but one and two for sure are going to be tested. Exception number one. Well, let me ask you this. Before I talk about the exception, I'm going to just cut back to the stool here. Okay. And I want you, before you answer, don't just jump out with an answer. And don't, I want you to answer just based on the three-legged stool rules. Everybody with me on what we're going to do here? Okay, just the three-part rule. Got just it. the three-part rule. Don't worry about the exemptions or the exceptions yet. I want just the three-part rule. Let's say Amy, who does not have a real estate license, mm -hmm. wants to work in a real estate office. She wants to go to work in a real estate office. Are there people, first of all, who go to work in a real estate office without a real estate license? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. So Amy wants to work in a real estate office. Mm -hmm. She is on a regular basis placing listings in the MLS. 
She is going out and putting signs up in front of properties. She is answering phone calls and questions that come in to the office. She is even going out on occasion and opening up properties that that office has for rent when tenants want to see them. And she is being paid a salary to do that. First of all, apply the three-legged rule. Is she being paid? Yes. 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 Is she doing the work for somebody other than herself? Yes. 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 And is she being paid for real estate related services? Yes. 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 So if we apply the three-legged rule, does Amy need a real estate license just to be an assistant in that real estate office? Just applying the three-legged rule. Yes. 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 Uh, Well, welcome to exception number one. Mm-hmm. Amy is your first exception to the rule. So it's kind of like you get through all those rules and then there's a net right there that catches a couple people. Right. Because let me just throw this out. There's a real world problem. Would it be a problem if as real estate agents, we could never hire an assistant unless they all had real estate licenses? Would that be yeah. a problem? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And so we need an exception to the rule. And that's the exception number one. Mm -hmm. Amy is the salaried employee of either the real estate owner or a real estate broker. She's actually a number two here. I misspoke. She's a number two. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. She is the salaried employee of a real estate broker. And since she is the salaried employee of a real estate broker, she is exempt from the licensing rule. Therefore, can she perform all those services without having to have a real estate license and be compensated for them? Yes. 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 She sure can. She sure can. And and not only that, by the way, she could be the salaried employee, not only of a real estate broker and do that, she could also be the salaried employee of the actual owner of the property. So I'm going to throw you another one out there that this exemption would apply to. Could someone be the property manager of a 300 unit apartment complex and not need a real estate license if they were the salaried employee of the owner of the apartment complex? Could that happen? Could that work? Yes. Yes. Is that still exception number two? That would be number one because they work directly for the owner of the real estate. That would be exception number one. Okay. All right. I think. Okay. Just to clarify where I get confused sometimes is that the property manager might not always be the owner. Well, that's what I said. They don't, I said they are the property manager, but they work for the owner of the apartment complex. Got it. My bad. That, that would be exception number one. The property manager would be a real estate broker. So they, they got could, it. So somebody could work in an apartment complex in one of two ways. They could either be salaried and work directly for the owner of the complex, or they could be salaried and work for the real estate broker who's managing the complex. In got either it. case, they would not need a real estate license. So you can be a property manager and work for the owner of real estate of that property without being licensed. That's right. That's got right. It. Hi, y'all ready for a hypothetical time? You ready to apply the rule? Yes. Let's go. Apply the rule now. Don't, don't, don't assume anything. Apply the rule. Work your way through the rule. Okay. Jonas wishes to start selling. Jonas, you don't have a real estate license, right? No, sir. Okay. You want to start selling houses tomorrow, Jonas? Well, maybe in six weeks. In six weeks. Well, I, no, I'm saying you can do it tomorrow if you want to. See, I, I yeah, in our myself. hypothetical here, I'm going to start you tomorrow. Jonas gets a job tomorrow working for MI Homes. Okay. They are going to pay him $75,000 a year to sit in a model home okay. and meet with buyers every single day show buyers those homes that MI Homes is building and constructing, the homes that MI Homes owns and has for sale right now. Sounds terrible. And help him. And Jonas is going to help them write offers, write contracts, pick options, and be paid $75,000 a year for that. Does 
he need a real estate license, folks? No. No. No, no he does not in the state of North Carolina need a real estate license. Now, he, he fits all three legs of the stool. He's being paid. He's, being, he's doing the work for somebody other than themselves. And he's doing a real estate service. Yep. But he is exception number one here because MI Homes is the owner of those houses that he's selling. And since the owner of those houses that he's selling has hired him as a salaried employee, he does not need a real estate license to sell those homes. Does that make sense for everybody? And, you know, Travis, this is like the most common one that I think people get confused on on test, you know, trying to think about like, Who's the owner? If we're talking about a builder, nine times out of 10, the builder is going to be the seller and the owner. That's right. They are the owner. It's their properties, their homes that they're trying to sell. That's exactly right. Now, here's the difference, though. Could Jonas go out and show other properties not owned by MI Homes to anybody? No. 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 Because he would be operating outside of that exemption there. Does that make sense to everybody? So basically, he would be limited to only showing the property that was owned by his employer. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Whereas yes. if you look at <clears throat> Seth, who has a real estate license, what property can Seth legally show in North Carolina? In my any. homes, any home. Any. Residential, commercial, it, it don't matter. It, it, you know, for sale by owner. Uh, new construction, resale, condos. He is completely unlimited because he's not operating as an exception to the rule. He has a license. So these exceptions have limitations. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Quick tangent. That's a really cool thing about the real estate license. It lets you do any kind of real estate in North Carolina, residential, commercial, leasing, anything. That's right. We don't have different licensure. We have the same one license fits all. That's exactly right. So back to the exceptions. Okay. How, how are we feeling so far about these exceptions? Okay. So anybody who is a, now let's talk about what salaried means, because that's a word that gets confusing for people on the exam. Salaried means you make the same thing, no matter what happens. That could be hourly. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that could be hourly. Or that could be a set salary, you know, like, so you could pay somebody 30 bucks an hour, or you could pay them $75,000 a year. Either is considered salaried for the purposes of this rule. The other thing that they might refer to them is, is just the word employee. Employee refers to the work, somebody who is paid a salary. They're yes. paid on a, and, and you might also see mention of a W-2. Is everybody okay with that? Now, I'm going to back up and quickly mention the third exception here is basically anybody who's doing legal work that turns into real estate work is exempt from needing a real estate license. So, so let's let's just throw a hypothetical. Oh, Taj out. asked the question. She asked it. Um. I, oh, uh, hold on, hold on to that uh, for just a second, Taj. We're okay. to talk about it. Okay, hold on to that. That's a great question, Taj. Uh huh. Um, and. So example number three, I want to give you one example of uh, an attorney or a trustee, somebody who's performing legal services that turn into real estate work. Let's say that, um, well, we we'll use Taj as an example since she asked the question. Let's say Taj's great aunt dies and leaves her as the executor of the estate. And her great aunt owns like 10 properties that need to be sold. Is Taj probably going to have to sell those properties as the executor of the estate? What do y'all think? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not a real estate service. That's a legal service because she was named the executor as a legal function. Does everybody see the difference there? So Same. we're not going to make Taj run out and get a real estate license just because somebody made her the executor of their estate. If a divorce attorney has to put a house up for sale because the couple's getting divorced, is the divorce attorney going to have to have a real estate license or are we going to say, don't worry about it? Don't worry about it. We're going to say, don't worry about it. Because what happened was they, they were not hired for the real estate service. They were hired for what kind of service? Legal. Legal, Legal service. And it just Legal. happened to turn into a real estate thing. That's the third exemption. That's much less common. But let's go back to Taj's question because that's a great one. 
She said, can that salaried person be paid bonuses? And Taj, that is a resounding no, 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 no. And N-O, no. Salaried means, so if if Jonas gets that job with N-I Homes, he makes $75,000. If he sells zero houses, he makes $75,000. If he sells 75 houses, he will never yep. make a dollar more or less based on how much he does. Bonus is considered a commission. That's right. In that term. Because whenever you start tying the money to your success, the real estate commission says that's a fee and you need a license for that. Is that does that make sense mm -hmm. for everybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, so, here's the thing. Jonas could go work for MI Homes and be paid a salary. But if there's five people in that office and none of them have real estate licenses, do any of them really have any incentive to be any better than the other ones? Or since they're all making the same amount of money, are they going to get real like, are they going to start looking at each other and be like, I don't know why I'm trying harder than you are. You ain't done shit this month and you're making the same amount of money I am. Is that going, is that going to quickly turn into that? Yes, yeah, so my ass gonna be sitting there waiting for y'all to work. That's right. That's that's it. That's it. So, in our business, it's much better to be licensed because then we can put you on commission. Yes, we put you on commit. We can pay you based on your productivity. Does that? Does that? So, in order to make that bonus, Jonas would need to get licensed. Which is what? Which is what he's doing. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So to get the um, the bonuses, the the extras because you did a good job, that requires licensure. That's outside. Now, what if what if they bonus everybody based on company profitability, not on individual? There's some, there's some gray area there. If everybody got paid based on company profitability, that'd probably be okay. It's okay. When, it's when you individualize it, but they're not yeah. going to test that. That they're not for gonna sure. And and also just to touch base on that because those are really good questions. When I took this class, I had so many like, okay, well, what if this? What if that? We'll always let you know like, hey, this is something you will be tested on. This is something you won't be. And it's not saying it's not, not a good question. It's just we have that 75 hour limit. So, so Rachel asked a question there and I want to make sure I'm answering the question you're asking, Rachel. I think Rachel's asking, could somebody who's this exemption not work full time? Could they be like, we just call you in? Yes. You could pay them hourly. So like as an example, to go back to the exemption here, let's say that MI Homes had Jonas on standby for when they have really busy weekends and they've told him, we'll pay you 50 bucks an hour to come out here and sit in this model home just when we need you. That would be fine. That would be fine. So it doesn't have to be like a full-time set 40 hours a week. The big key here is his pay is not based on his productivity. It's based on showing up, basically. Okay, good. I, I think that answered Rachel's question. How do we all feel about that? those exemptions? Feel pretty good about those and being able to apply those? Okay. And so William asked, yeah. can you define negotiate? Because I thought agents can't negotiate for their clients. Oh, that's a great question. Yes, William, agents absolutely can negotiate for their clients. We can't make decisions in, in any cases. There is a big difference between making decisions on behalf of our clients, but one of the biggest functions of a real estate licensee is to negotiate on behalf of our clients. Uh, in fact, I, you know, I think of my negotiation skills as probably one of the single biggest skills that I bring to the table. Um, we, and what that means is I just don't say things even though I know what should be said next in a no negotiation, I don't say them without running them by my client first. I always, when we get an offer, I always go to my client and say, here's the offer. Here's what I think we should do. Here's how I, how I should respond. Is that what you want to do? And, and then I'm going back. It's still my negotiation. I'm just making sure they sign off on it at every step of the way. You just can't make the final choice for your client. There you go. That's exactly right. Okay. I could if I was specifically given that authority, but without being specifically given that authority, then I can't make that sort of a decision. So as, as an example, the one I listed on Friday, when we talked about the list pricing, I sold them this house 10 years ago for $748,000. They have done nothing to it. Nothing. And when we talked about a list price, I said, well, you know, there's nothing on the market right now. You've got a beautiful lot. There's no competition. 
I think we should be really aggressive with the list price. Um, I said, I think a fair price for the house is probably a million to a million one based on the current activity. I said, but I think we should list it at a million two five because there's no competition and just see if somebody's crazy enough to pay that. Well, sure enough, cash offer for a million two five. Here was the negotiation. I put it in front of my clients. I said, sign it. Sign it now. Now, I can't say that on their behalf, but I can certainly advise them strongly that they should do that. Okay. Um, and that, so that's the differentiation. I mean, I, you know, could they have counter offered? Sure. If they wanted to. Is it a good thing to always keep like paper trail for these negotiations? Of course. Clients? Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to make sure we're always presenting our clients with all the options so that um, and, th and then what advice we're giving so that we can clearly show that was their choice with our advice along the way. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, so I, again, I've just pointed out some things we can do and cannot do when we are that exempt salaried employee. Okay. So it says if a person is a salaried employee, paid hourly or salaried, but never commissioned of the property's owner, they can perform any functions that their employer, who is the owner, want, and they don't need a real estate license. So in our example with Jonas, can Jonas go out and show those homes that MI has that they own that are for sale? Can Jonas do that? Yes. Yes. Can Jonas help them choose options and write contracts for those properties if that's what MI wants them to do because they're his employer? Yep. Yes. 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 Can, can he help negotiate because... That's what his employer wants him to do. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And the, the here's the key thing. Who does he work for? Who is his boss? His boss is the property owner. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. yes. And that yes. gives him and that gives him the right to do anything with that property because he works directly for the property's owner. Now, the other exception is not quite as strong. Working for a real estate broker is not quite as strong as working directly for the property owner because the property owner hired who? They didn't hire this employee. Who did the property owner hire? They hired the firm. They hired the firm, right? The real estate broker, the firm. And then the firm real estate broker decided we're going to hire this employee. Because that employee has this level of separation from the owner, they are a little bit more limited in what they can and cannot do with the property. So if you work directly for the property owner, this is where you've got to listen. You've got to tune in, folks. I mean, this stuff is narrow, nitpicky. If you, I'm going to back up a slide. If you work directly for the property owner, if your boss is the owner, if I looked up who owns this real estate, and you say, that's my boss. What can you do as far as services as the salaried employee of the property owner? What's the answer? Anything. 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 Anything, anything your boss lets you. Anything your boss lets you do. Anything your boss tells you to do. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So basically, like, so basically, like they're working for others and charging a fee, license required. This the exemption would be because they actually own the piece of property. That's right. That's, and then the second exemption is if they didn't own the property, then you couldn't do it. It well, there's one more exception. I could work directly for the real estate broker who's been hired to manage the property, to handle the property. So I could either work for the property's owner as an employee, or I could work as an employee of a real estate broker. So could Seth ha hire himself an assistant? Yes. 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 Does that help, Philip? And yes. And can you pay him however he wants, whether it's uh, per transaction or does it have to be, again, salaried or a, a pre-stated value? That's right. Salaried hourly, not per transaction, because that's based on success. Gotcha. Yep. That's right. So Seth could hire himself an assistant. Everybody with me on that? Yes. Now, if he hires them and he pays them with a salary, hourly salary, W-2, they can perform a lot of the same functions that he can as a real estate broker, but they are more limited than the people who are the employee of the property owner. 
In other words, I'm going to give you two examples here. Let's say the same apartment complex. Everybody with me on this? We got one apartment complex and you got two people working in the office. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Two people working in the office. Mandy, who is the salaried employee of the apartment complex owner. Everybody with me on that? And Eliza, who is the salaried employee of Seth, who is a broker property manager for the property. Now they both work side by side in the office. Is everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Same yeah. property, two different bosses though. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Neither one of them needs a real estate license because they both are exemptions. But Eliza cannot do as much as Mandy can do. Even though they're in the same property, and the reason Eliza cannot do as much as Mandy can do, who is Mandy's boss? Who does she work for? The owner. The owner. owner. And because she works for the owner, what can she do? Anything. 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 But Eliza does not work for the owner. Eliza works for a real estate broker who is managing that property. Does everybody see the difference? Yes. Yes. And so Eliza is going to be slightly more limited in the services that she can perform. She may have to tell Seth, I, hey, Seth, I'm not allowed to do that. Everybody with me on, on this thing? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what things Eliza, the employee of the real estate broker, can do. Okay. And more importantly, what things she cannot do. Okay. She can do basic things. She can stage property. She can put up signs. She can set appointments for Seth to go. So if Seth wants to do 10 showings this afternoon, do you think Eliza can set all the appointments for him if she's his salaried employee? Mm -hmm. Sure, yes. she can. If people come into the office and want to pay their rent, can they pay, do you think they can pay it to Eliza? As her as yes. a salaried employee of the property manager, real estate broker. What do y'all think? Pay it to her? Well, yes. can she collect it? Can yes. she handle the money? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 As long as Seth gives her permission, she can. Could she even take it to the bank and deposit it in Seth's trust account if he told her to do that? Yes. 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 Could she even show those rental units that are available for rent in that apartment complex if Seth told her to? Yes. 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 So if tenants yes. come in and they say, I want to I want to see unit number 26B and Seth's like, look, Eliza, I don't got time. You take them over there and show it to him. She could show that unit, but you ready for the one she can't do? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because it's coming on the test. Seth calls Eliza in the office and says, look, Eliza, this buyer is driving me nuts to go look at this house this afternoon that's on the market for sale. Just came on the market today. I don't have time to show it to him. Can you run over there and open the door and let them in? That is a big fat no. <laughs> a licensed person is required to show properties that are for sale. The salaried assistant of a real estate broker cannot show properties that are what? For, for, sale. for sale. For sale. They can't. <laughs> now, I don't know why this is the rule. It's all right. My, my dog's not, this. he's not seen me teach before. He's not used to me yelling. He's like, why are you yelling? I didn't do anything. <laughs> like walking away from me. Um, but the, the, the salaried assistant cannot show properties that are for sale. She can, Eliza, because she works for the broker, can show properties that are for rent, but she cannot show properties that are for what? For sale. For sale. Yeah. She cannot open the door at all on a property that is for what? Sale. And for that's sale. even to sale. let termite inspectors in, right. property for inspectors. Inspection for any reason, if that property is on the market for sale, Eliza does not put the key in the door, period, as the salaried assistant of a real estate broker. Now, here's the interesting question. Could Mandy show property that is for sale as long as it is owned by her boss yes yes yes, yes she could 
she's not limited in that way. But the difference with Mandy is she can only do anything with property that's owned by her boss. Whereas Eliza can work, she can do anything with any property as long as she doesn't show properties that are for what? Sale. For sale. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to go back and look at that distinction a bunch of times, folks, to get it nailed down in your brain. I mean, this is all that one rule. We, we're on rule number one. That's how in-depth this license law stuff can be. So you got you to gotta make sure that you're doing it. So I've given so you- there's exceptions and are there's limits to the exceptions? That's exactly right. The exceptions are limited. So I've given you the next three slides are just list examples. And I would suggest you go back and look through them um, several times. You know, what can an unlicensed person do uh, who works for a real estate broker? And what can they not do um, if they work for a real estate broker. So, you know, answering phone calls, putting stuff in the MLS, as long as the real estate broker gives them the information. Now they can't create the listings, but they can certainly enter them into the MLS. They can, you know, do like research for the real estate broker that they work for. They could put signs up in front of properties. They could put lock boxes on properties. Um, they could handle setting up repairs, all those kinds of things, delivering things. That's what acting as a courier means, scheduling appointments, all those kinds of things. That's all fine. Even depositing money, as I mentioned earlier. But that's one that is commonly missed on the test too. That like it, that I've really seen. Commonly missed, depositing money, accounting. W-2 money. salaried employees can handle a trust account. Let's say it again. W-2 salaried employees can handle a trust account. So now let me ask you this question, though. Y'all are a smart group, so I feel like I can ask you this question even on day one. If Seth, the real estate broker, hires an unlicensed person like Eliza and tells Eliza, I trust you with the trust account. You go ahead and you make all those deposits. You balance the trust account. Who's the real estate commission going to hold responsible if that trust account is not balanced? Are they going to come after Eliza or are they going to come after the broker who is employing her? The broker, the broker. The broker who's employing her. So he needs to be careful if he decides to give that much authority over to an unlicensed person. <laughs> okay. Um, so also, um, okay, I th we're moving on to it. Actually. So I was just going to say, and so here's the list of things that the unlicensed salaried assistant of a real estate broker cannot do. They cannot negotiate, whereas their broker, their employer can negotiate. The, the employee cannot. Um, they cannot create marketing materials. So could Eliza create the MLS, MLS listing for Seth's new listing, or could she only put it in if he hands it to her and says, stick this in the MLS? Only put it in if he hints to her. She could only put it in. She could basically enter the information if he gives her everything. Um, she cannot show property to potential buyers, so anything that's for sale. She certainly cannot make referrals and be paid fees, and she can't be paid bonuses on transactions. Um, so somebody asked me this question the other day. I said, well, listen, I've got somebody who doesn't have a license, but she's really great at closing transactions. Can I pay her $400 per transaction to take over my transactions and handle them from the time we go under contract till we close them? What do y'all think the answer is to that? Is that an allowable compensation setup for somebody who does not have a real estate license to pay them $400 per transaction? No. 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 Now, could we bring in an unlicensed person to do those things as an employee? Could we pay them a salary? Could we pay them $25 an hour to close those transactions for yes. us? Or yeah. Yeah. So that could, yes. right? That could also be on a, for every hour they actually work. Yep. Okay, cool. Right. We could pay them $25 an hour and make them punch clocks, you know? But we, here's why we can't pay them $400 a transaction. Are there going to be some transactions which they have to work on for 10 hours and some they have to work on for 50 hours? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you, yes. Pay, when you pay them $400 a transaction, that's not an employee. So when you pay them hourly, that means you're paying them more for the transactions where they have to do more work and less for the transactions where they do less work because you're compensating them for time. 
Everybody see the difference there? Yep, got it. Good. All right, so look at these scenarios. Let's go through a couple of these scenarios just to kind of test you on this stuff, all right? It says Teddy is an on-site. And, and, and real quick. Go ahead. It, real, real quick. So just so I'm clear too. So they can't be a 1099 employee. Like, so they have to actually have you taking out their taxes and be a legitimate employee of their company. That is correct. 1099 is not an employee. 1099 is an independent. Okay. So it has to be a W-2. They have to be taking out withholding taxes, uh, social security, FICA, unemployment insurance, all those kinds of things. Absolutely. Is that, is that the same thing for the owner as well? Like the that owner of the property? That is correct. Okay, okay. so either way they have to have them as an employee. That's right. The owner would have to employ them as an employee where they're doing withholding and unemployment and FICA and Medicare and all those things as well. Or get a license. Okay. You know, if you want to pay somebody with a 1099, if you want to pay them without taking out taxes and doing all those withholdings, they got to have a license. Okay. So look at this one. It says, Teddy is an on-site employee of Blue Sky Builders who's paid $75,000 annually and routinely meet with potential buyers to show them homes, help them select floor plans, choose options, and prepare purchase agreements. Does Teddy need a North Carolina real estate license? What do y'all think about is the answer? No. 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 Teddy does not. And the reason is that he is an employee of Blue Sky Builders. So he's an employee of the owner. He is the salaried employee for the owner. He is an exception to the rule. He meets all three legs of the stool, but he does not need a license because he is a salaried employee of the owner. That was actually my next question. So when you say right. it can be an individual person, but it can be a company. The That's right. right. Whoever okay. owns the property. If the owner is a, is a company, then you'd be the salaried employee of the company. If uh, So like as an example, it could be the salaried employee of an individual who owns a property too. You know, so it's just the, you're the salaried employee of the owner of that property. Great question, Wendy. That's not okay. a broker. All right, so look at this one. Oops, sorry. Juanita works in a real estate office and is paid $25 hourly with a W-2. Her job consists of performing various tasks on behalf of the broker in charge and other brokers within the office. Regularly, the BIC, broker in charge, hands her the file of a property and says, take my notes here and fill in this blank contract for the house on Main Street. Does this require a real estate license for Juanita? What do y'all think? No. 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 I would say this is also a no. No. Because it makes it very clear that she is a salaried employee paid with a W-2 and she works for a real estate broker. And that's one of the exceptions. Is everybody with me on that? Yes. Yes. Salaried employee. Oops, that's too many E's. Of real estate broker. And so therefore she's exempt. Can she open the door for inspectors like the termite inspector, home inspector? Not on a property that is for sale. Not on one that is for sale. On one that is for lease? Yes, but not on one that is for sale. Okay, here's a here's a twist on that what if um it's not it's not listed yet right they haven't done the listing paperwork but they want to let the termite guy in so they know what they're looking for if it's not listed yet she doesn't have any legal right to be there at all listed mean listed doesn't mean on the market listed means that they, the firm has been hired and she can't legally be in there if we don't have a listing agreement under any circumstances, nobody can. Gotcha. Okay, so once it's listed, my my assistant can't go there on my behalf and open up the property. It's going to have to be me. They can open it for themselves to be there, but not for anybody else to be there. So if she wants, if your assistant wants to go over there and do staging, that's fine. If your assistant wants to go over there and put flowers in the house, that's fine. If your assistant wants to go open the blinds and turn the lights on, that's fine. But letting someone else in the door of that property that's for sale, that's a no. Can she host an open house? Can she what now? I'm sorry. Host, Can an, she open host house. an open house. 
She cannot hold an open house. Absolutely not, because that would be holding a property that is for sale open for potential buyers to look at it. She, the, the salaried assistant could assist with an open house if a licensed broker were there with them, but they could not do it by themselves. And you know, so you'll very often see people's assistants be there to help with an open house, but they should not be there by themselves. Right. Okay. But if they're working for an owner like Blue, um, Blue Sky or uh, just an owner by John Smith, then they can show. That is correct. Right. If they are they the open house. House. That is exactly right, Philip. If they are the salaried employee of the property owner, then they absolutely uh, can show that property that's for sale. And the property owner could be a company, anything other than a brokerage. That's exactly right. That's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Starting to see that distinction now. Yep. Yes. All right. Uh, so Latoya, a salaried assistant of Broker Steve who makes $500 weekly, schedules and shows apartment units for rent to potential tenants in a building that Steve manages. Does Latoya need a rent a real estate license for this? No. 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 She does not. She does not. She is perfectly fine as the salaried assistant. So a salaried assistant of a broker. And she is showing property for what? For rent. For rent. And that is fine. She does not need a license for that. Good. Good. These are all the kinds of things they dig at you on the test about. Mm -hmm. um, Jose's parents own a duplex with tenants occupying one side and Jose living in the other. Jose collects rent, manages tenant security deposits, handles small repairs, and generally cares for the property for his parents in exchange for living rent-free in his half. Does this require a real estate license for Jose? Now, I want you to. Yes. Apply yes. The yes. Rules. yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. no. Yes. no. Yes. So let's yes. work our way through the rules. Number one, is Jose being compensated? Yes. 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 He's being compensated with, with free rent. Is Jose performing? a real estate service for someone other than himself. Yes. 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 yes, he is. So the stool is standing up, correct? Now we have to ask ourselves, is he one of the exemptions? Is he a salary yes. employee no. of either the owner no. or no. of the oh, real no. estate broker? No. Doesn't, I don't see no. anything about a salary. I don't see anything about the word employee. I don't see anything about the word W-2. I don't see anything to say he's an exemption here, folks. Whether we like it or not, in the state of North Carolina, Jose needs a real estate license. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. How many of you think you would miss that on a test because you would immediately jump to, that's his mom and daddy. He don't need no license for that. That's his mom and daddy. You can't answer these questions like that. You we can't say it go exactly with that voice. You'd say it in exactly that voice too. That's right. That's the way he would say it. Exactly. Exactly. No, you 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 have to. I get it. I get it. And I'm sure there are ten thousand people like Jose out there right now who are doing exactly this sort of thing and who don't have a real estate license. I get it. These rules are broken all the time. That's why you can't answer them from the perspective of what people are doing. You have to apply the rule. And the rule says Jose needs a real estate license in this case. Now, what if his parents owned it and had like a company or whatever, and they were giving him, you know, whatever the rent, let's say the rent's a thousand dollars a month. And they say, okay, we're going to give you 250 per week to do this for us. But, and they're as an employee, Are that would change that. When it as an employee on a W-2 and they're doing withholding and all that, then he would be exempt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he's an employee in that case. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, Ingram, licensee, Ingram, licensee is just the generic term for somebody with a real estate license. Um, licensee Ingram received a phone call from Carla, who's a potential buyer. Carla saw a for sale sign on the front lawn of one of Ingram's listings. Ingram calls his assistant, Chandler, who's paid $30 hourly on a W-2, and ask if Chandler could go meet the buyer and open the home for the buyer to check it out. Does Chandler need a license to perform this task? 
Yes. 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 Even though Chandler is a salaried assistant, the salaried assistant who works for a real estate broker cannot open a home for a who? For sale. For a buyer, sale. because that's a, a buyer. sale. It tells you twice. It says for sale, and it uses the word buyer. And that's mm -hmm. a no for the salaried assistant of a real estate broker. We Is everybody okay on that one right there? Why that? So Why? even just because you see a salaried employee or W-2, does it automatically mean, bam, that's he's good? It. You've got to be really I was going to say that that's a catchy one. That is a catchy one. That is a catchy one. Now, could we change a couple of words in here and make this okay? What if the same scenario happened, but the sign in front said for rent and we mm -hmm. were going to open it for a tenant? Would yeah. that be okay without a license? Yes. That, yes. 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 If it was yes. If it, same exact scenario, if it said for rent and a tenant to be shown the property, then Chandler could go show it. But because, okay. it's, because it's a listing that's for sale and because we're taking a buyer in, Chandler can't go over there and do that. And also, what if we change it up and said that he is working for a builder? Or if you said Chandler was the employee of the property owner, could Chandler go and show that property that's for sale? Could you leave everything else the same and say that Chandler is the employee of the property owner? Yes. You see, those little things change the answer to whether a license is required or not. Is this super nitpicky? Y'all see what I mean about yeah, that? Yeah, it's how, it's how they word it. It is. You really have to sit there and tear this apart. That's why we spend so much time on this one rule, because you're going to get quit. And when people are not successful on the license exam, 99 times out of 100, they're not successful on the North Carolina section of the license exam. And this is the reason, because they dig and they dig and they dig. it. Remember, it's their rules. This is their opportunity to test you on their rules. They they want to make sure you know their rules. They don't want you violating their rules, and it's their test. So they're going to hammer you with these rules. Okay, good. So let's look at this. Now this is the format of a test question. Drew is a licensed real estate broker in North Carolina who's managing an apartment complex and wants to run a promotion to help attract new tenants. Which of the following would not be allowable as a promotion? So we're asking which one Drew cannot do. A, free month's rent given to any new tenants who sign a one-year lease. Would it be allowable to give a free month's rent to any tenants who sign a one-year lease? What do y'all What do y'all think about yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I would say so, because you would be giving them a free month's rent for representing who? Themselves. Themselves. Right, themselves. So that's okay. We can do that one. Look at B, a free month's rent given to any current tenants who recommend a friend that sign a one-year lease. Do you think that yeah. would be okay or not okay? No, no not, not okay. okay. I no. would say not okay because we're paying them for representing somebody mm -hmm. other than themselves. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Look at C, a $50 gas gift card to any potential tenants who come to view an apartment on Saturday. Could we give <laughs> potential tenants a $50 gas card for yes. bringing themselves yes. to the property? Yes. 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 Yes, because they're being paid for representing themselves. They're doing it for themselves. And then D, one month's rent paid to any licensed real estate agent who produces a tenant that signs a one-year lease. Well, the, the yes. big key giveaway here is they're licensed. Can we pretty much pay a licensed person anything? Right, yep. Yes. yes. So that one's allowable. So what's our answer here? Which one is not allowed? A free month's rent to current tenants for referring someone else. That's not going to be allowed. Right. Now, okay. say that we have a builder, a developer that is got like, say, 10 homes and he hires you salaried and he wants you to show the houses. That would be OK because you're working for the builder, not a brokerage. Right. If you work for the builder, that would be a, that that activity would be OK. Yes. OK. Yes. Got it. OK. 
Okay, and this is a really, really good time to implement that um, test taking strategy for these negative questions. Right, that's the another thing I was going to point out here. When you see a negative word in a question, so what do we need? What do we mean by a negative word in a question? Luckily, they're 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 paring this down, but there's still quite a bit of it. Negative word, not, except, incorrect. People struggle with those questions. I'll tell you why. Because your brain's not trained to think about what's not true, what's wrong. You're trained to look for the right answer in things. How many of you have missed questions before? And you missed it because you answered what was true when they were asking for what was not true. And you're like, oh, shit, I didn't notice that. How many of you have done that, right? Mm -hmm. There is a simple way to overcome that, right? Very simple way to overcome that. As soon as you see a negative word, don't play their game. When you see a negative word, look at what I did. I just went through all four of them and I said, okay, that's okay. That's not okay. That's okay. That's okay. Notice the answer. It's not the one that's not okay. It's not the one that's okay. It's the one that's different. It's the one that stands out. Anytime you have a negative question, clear your mind and say, I don't care if the answer is true or false. If I ask you which answer they're looking for and you say the true one, I'm going to slap you. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to virtually slap you. Don't guess. You're not looking for the true one. You're not looking for the false one. You're looking for the one that is what? Different. Different. Different, right? And it's, it's like Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just isn't the same, right? You learn that when you watch Sesame Street when you're a little kid, and it's still true. Whenever you see a negative test question, and so that could be not or accept or false or incorrect or untrue, all those negative words. And they're usually in all caps. You can usually recognize yep. them because they're almost always in all caps when they put them in there. So when you see that all caps negative word, just recognize, okay, I'm going to check all four of these. And one of them is different than the other three. Either three of these are true and one's false or three of them are false and one's true. Either way, I'm choosing the one that is different. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. well, not really in this example, because I'm looking at A, it looks the same as B, kind of, you know? In other words, it's not odd enough. Well, that's where you got to know the rule. I'm not saying it's going to help you know the rule. I'm just going to say, I'm saying it will help you as far as choosing the correct answer once you know the rule. A and B are similar, but what's the big difference? In A, we're compensating people for representing themselves. In B, we're compensating people for representing somebody else. So that makes one of them okay and the other one not. Right. So oh, I see that's maybe why different. Good, 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 good. And so Jennifer had also asked, could you explain why B is not correct? So why is B not correct? Who are let's we put names to it. Yeah. So let's 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 do that. Let, let's instead of saying current tenant, let's change that. Let me go to a pen here. Let's change that current tenant stuff right there. Let's change that to given to Bob, who recommended Sam. That I was going to say Sally, one, but that Sam that signs a one year lease. <laughs> Can we give Bob a free month of rent because he recommended Sam unless Bob has a real estate license? No. 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 Because Bob no. is not representing himself. He's representing who? Somebody. Sam. Someone. Because Sam Someone. came and got, yes, somebody else. Because Sam came and signed a one-year lease. Now Bob is getting something of compensation. Right. Bob is not signing a lease. So when Bob gets paid, he's not being paid for doing anything for himself. He's being paid for bringing somebody else to the party. He, why did we give Bob free rent? Not for anything Bob did for himself. We bought, gave Bob free rent because he brought who? Someone else. Someone Sam. else. Sam, somebody else. That's what requires licensure, and that's what makes B unacceptable. So for students who are in, like, college dorms, or not college dorms, but um, student living apartment complexes. If the if the company says if you refer a friend, you can get a hundred dollar gift card. You must have a real estate license to accept that. You got it. 
You got it. They're violating license law by offering that. You got it. Hey, is it Aloysia? Is that right? Aloysia. 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 Okay. Aloysia. All right. I just want to make sure I had it right. Um, I think the thing here that makes it a little confusing is that um, apartment complexes will tip can do that, can do be, and you don't have to have a, uh, a, a real estate license, but this is a broker who is doing it, not the apartment complex. Well, apartment complexes can't do can't. it. It's still a violation of license law. What makes it tough is people violate the license law all the time. Every day. That's what makes it tough mm -hmm. is that uh. this you see <laughs> happen in the real world is a violation of license law. They don't law. know this. All the time. And, and gotcha. there you go. And that's what, remember that whole conversation we started with you can't judge these questions based yeah. on what you see out there in the wild because people in the wild don't know they're breaking these rules in a lot of cases. Uh -huh. right? They're not looking at the speed and sell limit sign. Okay. That's a, that's a, so here's why the real estate commission might put this out there for you. Do you think the real estate commission would want a real estate broker to recognize when they go into an apartment complex and be able to say, hey, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So that somebody is letting those people know they're breaking the law by offering those kinds of bonuses to people. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And you, I, I love your question, Grant. You're right. There, it's not a distinction here of it's because a real estate broker is doing it versus nobody can do this. No, this is illegal for anybody to offer that form of compensation like that. Yep. Crazy as that sounds, it is. Yeah. Because I know we see it. I know you do. And it, it, okay. it definitely, it's out there. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Okay. This is a question that would trip me up, I think, because it's very complicated. It is. It is. And these will be complex questions. There is no doubt. There is no doubt. And that's why you got to go back to whenever they're asking you about who needs a license, what needs a license, you have to tear it apart. You have to say, okay, number one, are they being paid? Number two, are they working for themselves or somebody else? Number three, is that a real estate related thing that they're being paid for? If all of those are true. So, I mean, look at A, a free month's rent given to any new tenant who sign a one-year lease. Well, they're being paid, but they're not representing somebody else, so they don't need a license. Look at B, a free month's rent is given to a current tenant who recommends a friend. friend. They're being paid and they're being paid for representing somebody else. License. So you can look at it this way. A, no license. B, license. C, no license. D, no license. Which one is different? There's your answer. All right. Okay. And it definitely, listen, this stuff is, it, it's, it's in depth. It really is. And you, you find out very rapidly how, how much this license law is violated. Why you cannot memorize it. You've got to know how to apply that rule. Yeah. So talk to me here. How many of you feel like you already learned something before lunch on day one? There you go. There Yay. You go. I, before I, we do go to lunch, I want to share something. So let me know. Okay. I will tell you that that's of the 40 questions on the state specific section of the exam. That's probably good for two or three of them from that section right there. There probably be two or three questions about who requirement for licensure from that state section. So that's a significant section that we just went over. You know, go back through those scenarios time and again and make sure you really under don't try to memorize the situation because you're probably not going to see that exact situation again. But but understand why those were the answers to those things. You know, and if, if you get confused, come back and ask us. That's what we're here for. Seth, you said you had something you wanted to share with me. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to share my um, notes. Um, okay, so just real quick before we go to lunch, y'all, this is how your notes are going to appear every single day at the end of class. I'm really loving to do like color coordination stuff. That's how I learn the best. So everything that's kind of like larger and bold and it's highlighted in green is the section that we covered. Everything that is highlighted in yellow indicates that this was a new message that I sent in the chat and therefore it's like almost always going to be a new slide. If you see something that has like a little bit of a lighter yellow color to it, that just means this is an extension of the topic that I just branched into right up here. As these get darker, it just means it's another 
branch into what we're talking about. So you can see there's three different colors of yellow here if you kind of look really hard at it. Um, but again, another big yellow highlighter, um, bold yellow hi highlighter indicates it was another topic. Um, and then also I'm gonna be listing right around in here, those images for the um, scenarios. And then anything in purple is your test taking strategies. Ink purple, however you wanna do it. Um, so that's how I color coordinate things. And then right underneath this unit 1.1, I'm going to have another one down here that says unit 1.2, big and green. And at, speaking of unit 1.1, there is a quiz already uh, specific for unit 1.1 in Learn Test Pass. So make sure you, and I'm sure Seth will put that in the recap email as well as far as homework goes, but you have a quiz related to who needs a license um, in Learn Test Pass that you can take to, as a, you know, this evening before we you know, roll into class again on uh, Wednesday so that you uh, are staying caught up and making sure you get that stuff sort of cemented in. Um, and so, yes, on that topic, like what will be under here, it will look like this for your homework of things you need to stay on top of. And I usually do that in orange. So that's kind of like, oh, I gotta get it done hazard. And then green is saying like, hey, this is what we covered for today and then right under homework as well. I think I usually do this, um, I think I do this in yellow as well, but the way you can differentiate this bold yellow from the one that you'll see for what's coming up the next session that we do is that it will be like coming up and it will also be large, bold, and it will be highlighted that, so. Just so you know how things are color coordinated, I have a hard time like figuring out what is a section, what's a subset of that section, et cetera. All right, everybody, you made it to lunch. Um, so take three hours and I'll see you. On, no, I'm kidding, don't do that. Um, uh, let's take, uh, I got, uh, come back at 12.45. That's uh, about uh, a 40 minute lunch, 39, 40 minute lunch break um and uh go ahead and take uh till 1245 and then we'll see you back and we will pick up unit two uh when you come back um and uh unit 2.1 so we're moving away from unit one remember i told you the license law we were doing you know in, in spurts so we've done 1.1 now we're going to leave license law and we're going to start unit two which is real estate